If you've ever woken up one morning and felt like a raging sea battle in the world of Warhammer, then I've got the game for you. If you speak to a gamer of a certain generation, they'll tell you that Man of War is one of the best games Games Workshop have ever developed. Well, I've never played it, but I've managed to get myself a near mint, unpunched copy of the original box set. So I'm going to open it up, we're going to have a look at it, and see what's in the box. Beautiful old style Games Workshop artwork. That's back in the day before Photoshop and before modern printing techniques, but that's pretty awesome. Orcs and Dwarfs. Okay. The back of the box, the blurb. Man of War is the game of raging sea battles between the great ocean-going fleets of the old world. The roar of cannon and the cries of the mighty blood-drenched warriors echo across the seething waters. Mighty warship crammed with beast men, Orcs and Chaos Warriors do battle for supremacy on the high seas. Roaring with anger, berserk sea monsters crush towering galleons between their massive jaws and razor-sharp fangs. The sea boils and steams as powerful magicians unleash immense destructive energies upon the stricken ships of their foes. Well, if that doesn't get you going, nothing will. Let's just have a look down the bottom for the copyright date. Here we are. Copyright 1992. 22 years old. That's the same size box as similar games of the period. So I'm talking Space Hulk, I'm talking Necromunda, the original box set. Okay, we've got the rule book. It's pretty thick. It's all paper, it's covered in paper. 70 odd pages worth, it's all black and white. It seems to be all combination of artwork or diagrams. There's no photographs in it. What do we got here? The rules. Start page 10, finish page 24. So the basic rules are only 14 pages. That's nice. Fleet lists. So there's fleet lists for... Admirals, Wizards and Magic, Imperial, Bretonian, Dwarf, Elf, Dark Elf and Orcs. Now I'm pretty sure subsequent expansions increased the range of races playable. Then we have five pages of scenarios and campaigns. Excellent. Oh, I love finding these things. It's like an archaeological dig. A 1992 subscription offer for White Dwarf. Fill it out. Lick the sticky bit here. And mail it off to Games Workshop in Baltimore, Maryland. Let's just see what a White Dwarf subscription cost back in 1992. One year, United States, $35. Ah, uh, we have a US Games Workshop retailer list. Be very interesting to see how many of those are still in business. We've got a blue ink print quick start rules by the looks of it. How to play Man of War, making your models, setting up, how to play. 
That's good. Quick start rules in three pages. I like that. Oh, this is just awesome. A 1992 Games Workshop price list. Let's just have a look. Dwarf box set, $9.99. Oh. 40k codexes, $19.99. Rhino tank, $14.99. We are original retail price of this box set $49.99. Okay, we have a painting guide. This is interesting. The sales for the ships. They're actually these. According to these instructions, you're supposed to cut out these full colour sails and pennants and stick them to your ships. I have to say, this paper's not the best quality. It's slightly thicker than your standard printing paper, but you've got to imagine it's going to be flimsy and fragile once you've got it affixed. We'll see when I build the fleet. Ho oh, ho, Games Workshop World of Hobby Games. This is just great. Oh, Games Workshop, where did you go wrong? Epic. This is all promoted, all supported, and what do we got now? The three main systems. Ah, we've got the fleets. So the starter set comes with six ships and the starter rules suggest you've got one Imperial fleet, one pirate fleet, hence the two separate colours for anybody that doesn't want to paint them up. Um, certainly very thick plastic in the ships. The detail looks reasonable, but we've certainly come a long way since 1992. I might be wrong, it might even be the age, but I'm not sure this plastic feels as, as strong as the modern GW Sprue. I don't think it's going to matter much because the ships themselves are, are very thick. But they're a pretty basic sculpt, really, just in terms of the detail. So we've got two cannons. They must be the oars. Makes you wonder why they need sails, but, oh well, that's another issue. OK, we've got the mast sprues. These are obviously stuck to the ships, then those paper sails get stuck to these. That looks like it's going to be a bit tricky. If anybody's got any suggestions of an easier way to do this, please post below. It would be much appreciated. OK, we've got two decks of cards. These are still Still in their plastic wrap, a magic deck by the looks of it. Yeah, they're all magic cards. A Man of War deck. I to say I love a game with random events in a card deck. I hope that's what this is for. 
All right, we've got a lot of cardboard here still unpunched. Let's see what we've got. Number of tokens. Uh, number of debris markers and wreck markers. Okay, we've got rocks and island terrain. This is obviously all going to be flat, so it's going to be two-dimensional terrain, but still looks good. Okay, this looks like your reference sheet for an Empire fleet. This covers three ships, an Empire War Galley, an Empire Wolf ship, and an Empire Great ship. Okay, it's got the stats, it's got movement distances, weapon configuration, and special rules, so that's good. That's good. Okay, we've got ship cards. Six Empire War Galley ships. From what I understand, each ship in your fleet requires a separate card here for, for bookkeeping. Okay, we've got the Pirate War Galley. And the pirate fleet. Let's just see if there's any difference in the special rules between the Empire and the pirates. Granted, they're the same ship. No, they look pretty much the same. So the box set, you've got two identical fleets by the looks of it. Probably a good way to start a game. Uh, we've got a harbour there. Submerged tokens. Well, we look like we've got what seems to be a whirlpool in the middle. My guess is these must be templates to measure range of your cannon fire. They look like they're about 10 inches long. we got here? Ah, wizard cards. So how do you develop your wizards? Well, you've got wizard level, you've got college colour. I wonder if that's got any similarities to old edition Warhammer fantasy rules. Turning template. Well, my guess is... Looks to me like every two inches a ship can turn 30 degrees by the looks of it. What have we got here? This must be some method of tracking the rank or level of your crew or captains. We've got cutthroat, veteran, sailor, sea dog and elite. More islands, more templates, damage, crew, abandoned and sunk. Oh, let's not forget blaze. Let's just have a look at the sides of the box. Oh, hang on. Okay, we've got 3D6. Seems to suggest it's a D6 based system. What have we got at the side of the box? Uh, 1992. What's Games Workshop touting? Space Hulk and its two expansions. Warhammer 40k. Warhammer Fantasy Battles, Mighty Empires, Blood Bowl. 
advanced hero quest and accessories well that's excellent well it's pushing all my geek buttons I've got to say um, where I'm gonna go with this well I'm gonna paint up these fleets and I'm gonna get some games in Well, let's take another look at these quick start rules. Oh, you can learn the rules with me. Let's have a look. Proceeds by turns, each player moving and fighting before the next player has a turn. At the start of each turn, both players roll a dice. Player with a higher score goes first that turn. Oh good, so the first player is randomised, I like that. You may move and fight with your war galley. A war galley can move either by sail or by oars at the speed given on its template. I really hope it's got some mechanic for wind direction that affects sail movement. Start a turn one, both players roll a dice. Highest goes first. Well, they've told us that. The Empire players move under sail towards the pirate ship, making a turn to avoid the island. Because he is under sail, he uses the turn template. Each turn he makes takes up two inches of his movements. The rules for using the turn template are written on the template itself. Oh, that's good. Empire players firing. The Empire player's movement brings him fairly close to the pirate ship, so he decides to open fire with his cannon. The diagram on his fleet list shows that his war galley has a single battery of cannons. It also shows him the corridors down which he can fire them. Let's have a look at that. Ah, it's the fleet list we need, not that. Let's have a look. I see, so it looks like the firing direction is straightforward. Well, that's consistent with the model because that's the location of the cannons. So it's a what you see is what you get system by the looks of it. I like that too. Yeah, most ships' cannons are fixed in place, can only fire in the direction they are mounted. The firing template is used to show which area is covered by the guns. Place the firing template in front of the ship so it just touches the prow. The Empire player finds he can just touch the pirate vessel and can therefore fire his cannons. Because he has just one cannon, the Empire player only rolls one dice. He looks at the number rolled and compares it with the pirate ship template. If he scores a 4, 5 or 6, he has hit something, as these numbers appear on the pirate's template. Let's just have a look at that. Ah yes, 4, 5 or 6. Gotcha. If he scored a 1, 2 or 3, he's missed. In this case, the Empire rolls a 5, hitting the pirate's forecastle location, which contains his cannons. Oh, I see as depicted in the grey silhouette of the ship. Well, that's pretty intuitive. Damage. The pirate player looks at location 5 on his template. The cannons here are quite tough and therefore get a saving roll of 4, 5 or 6. There we go. Save 4, 5 or 6. If he scores a 1 or a 2 on a d6 roll, his cannon will be destroyed and his ship will not be able to fire back. In this case, the shot is from so far away that there's a range modifier added to a saving roll. The firing template shows that at long range there's a plus 1 modifier to the saving roll. Unfortunately, the pirate player rolls a two and his cannon are destroyed. He places a damage marker on that location to remind him the cannons are gone. So that's what those damage markers are for that we went through earlier. 
The Empire plays turn is over. Play passes to the Pirate player. Pirate player chooses to move his ship under oars and head straight towards the Empire ship, ready to ram him next turn. When turning under oars, the ship may either turn using the sailing turn template in the normal way or turn on the spot. Turning on the spot through up to 90 degrees takes half the ship's move. In this case, two inches, leaving with another two inches to move. Well, my guess is speed's got to be lower under oar than sail. That must be the balancing mechanic for having more manoeuvrability. Yeah, cannon, pirates' cannons have been destroyed, so he cannot shoot at the ship. His turn ends. Turn two, Empire player rolls a two, pirate rolls a six. Pirates go first. Pirate player again decides to move his ship under oars so that he can use his ram. You cannot ram when moving under sail. He's three inches away from the Empire ship, the minimum distance needed to ram, and can therefore ram his opponent. Pirate player moves his ship straight forward until it touches the Empire ship and his ram hits home. Do not roll to see where the Empire ship has been hit as ram always hits below the waterline location. So there we are. Save on a 5 or 6. First hit has no effect, second hit sinks the ship. Pirate player's boarding action. Now the ships are in contact. The pirate player decides to send his brave lad swarming over the bows of the Empire ship. A boarding action is fought in rounds. Each round both players roll a dice, adding the number of crew counters they have fighting to their dice roll. Side with a high score wins. Well, none of that's terribly difficult. That's great. Well, I have to say I'm really impressed. I can see this being a really good, light, humorous beer and pretzels type game. Well, I'm looking forward to getting some games of this in. Um, I did buy the Dreadfleet set when it came out, so I've got some nice terrain. I've got a very nice mat there to use as a plane surface. I've also been picking up some of the box sets, so I've got an Orc Fleet there ready to go. Uh, I've got some High Elves on the way, and I've got some other random ships from random races. So if you're keen to see where I go with this, then please click subscribe, because I do intend to update my progress here in future videos. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.